What's going on, everybody? This is the I Test, a fantasy football podcast. I'm here with Paul Orlando, and it is free agency frenzy week. We have had a ton of moves happening in the NFL over the last 24 hours, and boy, is it crazy. Tons of trades, tons of free agency acquisitions. That's a new word that I learned. And uh, we're here to make it easy for you guys. We're going to talk about some of the biggest moves that have happened over the last day and how that may affect your fantasy team moving forward, whether you're in a dynasty league, whether you're starting your prep a little way, way, way too early for redraft season. That's okay. It's never too early to start, but we're going to make it easy for you. And before we start, I would just like to say, if you're watching this on YouTube, go ahead and press the like button. You can also subscribe to our channel. That really helps us gauge what you guys are interested in. That way we can keep pumping out topics that you like. And of course, if you subscribe, go ahead and put your notifications on. That way you know when we come out with content so I don't have to make an annoying Snapchat story every week. (laughs) Even though we will do that anyway. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah, right, right. We're still going to do it. We also have our Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter handles, names, whatever you want to call them. They're in the description below. So go ahead and follow us on all things social media. Paul, we were right. Justin Fields is the quarterback of the future for the Chicago Bears. They're putting their trust in him. They traded their 1.01 to the Panthers earlier mm-hmm. this week. And they got a lot for from the Panthers. All they had to do was give up the 1.1, and they got two first rounds, two they got a second first... rounds, and DJ yeah. Moore. Yeah, they got they moved back to the ninth pick this year. They got Carolina's second pick this year. I think it's like 90th overall or something. I don't know exactly where it is, but it's their second pick this year, first pick next year, second pick next year, and DJ Moore, University of Maryland alumni. Oh, nice. And then that's who I wanted to talk about was DJ Moore. Lots of different takes on the DJ Moore acquisition by the Bears. Some people are really liking it. Some people don't really think it makes much of a difference. At first, I'd like to see what side you're on. So this is funny because I think this is a topic where the three of us, including Bob, he's over in, where is he now? He's in Egypt. Taiwan, America, Giza Giza Strip. Yeah, he's somewhere. Somewhere cool. Four more weeks till we get our boy back. He will be in Ireland for St. Paddy's Day, though, which is insane. That's so cool, Bob. That's like being in America for July Fourth. Like people don't understand. Yeah. So, Bob, have a lot of fun. Don't have too much fun. Don't get arrested or anything over there. We need you back. We're excited for you to get back. But, but yeah, the the DJ Moore thing is, I think something where the three of us even kind of have all differing opinions in some way. For me, I personally love the move. I think he was the crown jewel in those trades. I mean, Ryan Poole's got a bunch of picks, which is awesome, but he swung for the fences with DJ Moore, a 25 year, he's either 25 or 26 at the start of the season, a young receiver who I think passes the eye test for us, but he just has never really had that quarterback play to really solidify it. So the way I kind of look at it is I am high on DJ Moore this year. I think DJ Moore is going to be pretty good. I think he's going to creep into the wide receiver one conversation. I see him finishing like wide receiver 14, 15, somewhere around there. I think he's an excellent wide receiver two in redraft or dynasty, whichever, but here's the kicker for me. If DJ Moore is a middle tier to low tier wide receiver two this year, means finishing in like wide receiver 19 to 24, 25 range, I'm done with him. I'm not drafting him or putting his value where other people will have it. So this is kind of a, that's a long way of me saying that this is a make or break year for me as a DJ Moore fantasy owner. Yeah, I, I'm certainly low on DJ Moore. I I do think that the Bears made a wise move in going for him because right now that, that was the best player on the Panthers' offense, so why not? But I still think that the Bears need more offensive weapons. I believe I said 
a couple episodes ago, we were talking about what the Bears are going to do, and we were predicting if they were going to stick with Justin Fields or not. I I compared it to the Jalen Hurts situation last offseason, where the talk of the town was that Jalen Hurts is a great rushing quarterback, but he doesn't have an arm. But then the Eagles gave him weapons, and it was like a let's see what he can do type of season, and it turned out great. But the difference here is that they got A.J. Brown in the offseason. That's exactly what I was going to say. Is A.J. Brown is like a perennial top five talent. Yeah. And, and the Bears are now stuck with Darnell Mooney, Claypool, and D.J. Moore. And it's just not that three-headed monster that the media is making it seem like. So I'm certainly weary as a – I'm not a, if I was a fantasy owner of D.J. Moore, I see him more as a flex player or a plug-and-play. Definitely a late – round pick in the draft like somewhere in the seven or eighth round ninth round even like I'm not reaching for DJ Moore in any way I will say this his target share last year was amazing Mm -hmm. so many targets I mean if you look at his stats almost every single game he was in the green for targets with the horrible quarterbacks that he's had in his whole career and I haven't looked at his targets over the last couple years it looks like he's never had ignore his rookie season he hasn't had lower than 118 targets in a year so he's never had 100 catches though so that concerns me obviously you could blame the quarterback there but I know tons of other receivers that have had bad quarterbacks that have reeled in targets or uh, receptions and on top of that DJ Moore is not a red zone threat so I think people are utilizing the target share and the bad quarterback as an excuse for his below average play, that may be right, but I don't think that that speaks volumes to his fantasy outlook. I don't think that him going to the Bears makes him a great fantasy wide receiver. So I see him more in the flex range where he might be like a top 30 wide receiver, somewhere in like the 24 to 30 range. Yeah. So again, this is where we kind of disagree, where I think that DJ Moore does have wide receiver one upside this year. I think if you put him with Justin Fields, I think everyone can agree is the most talented quarterback he's ever played with. But what I really like is this is kind of a dark horse, but we finally get to see Darnell Mooney have some less pressure. He's the wide receiver two. He doesn't have the pressure of the wide receiver one. He's probably going to be getting less talented corners covering him. And so I'm really, I think Darnell Mooney might be a sneaky flex play this year as well. But Chase Claypool, Darnell Mooney, DJ Moore, you know what they all have in common, John? Uh, They suck. (laughs) One can argue, but every single one is 25 or younger. So that's nice. It's a young team. Yeah. So from a dynasty standpoint, if you have these three receivers, I would not look to sell them just yet let's see how this year goes because who knows you could strike oil with a darnell mooney even a chase claypool can see his career kind of become rejuvenated now that again dj moore's in town darnell mooney claypool we run running more of those slot routes he's still a big bodied athletic freak they called him what like the maple tron because he's from canada or something mm-hmm. so the, all the physical tools are there for claypool it's just a matter if they can put it together and i just keep going back to this is this is the year. If if none of them perform this year, then I'm done with them. I'm not saying I would never draft them, but they're certainly going to be lower on my list. Yeah, I'll I'll certainly agree with you with the Darnell Mooney take. I think you can get better value in a in a redraft league drafting Darnell Mooney where his ADP is. I don't know what it is going to be. Yeah. I would assume it would be somewhere I honestly I think DJ Moore is going to be a lot earlier than the 8th round. I that could be where Mooney falls but I would much rather get Mooney there than like DJ Moore in the sixth. Yeah. You know, because stacking up on your wide receivers in those later rounds and like the middle rounds of the draft of a redraft league, Darnell Mooney could certainly be a hidden gem just because you're right. He's not going up against the number one defensive back anymore. He's going against the number two. I I, I do think that 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 is true. Now, one last question about the Bears, Paul. With the acquisition of DJ Moore, and of course, they have plenty of more first round and second round picks. I think we both assume that the Bears are going to focus on the offensive line. 
and work to protect Justin Fields. Does Justin Fields crack the top five as a fantasy quarterback next year? He does. I he does so too. I think that if you have Fields in Dynasty, you should be over the moon. Did did somebody trade him in our league? In he, Dynasty, no. In redraft, he was traded. Not in not in Dynasty. Yeah, because Fields has still been drafted by the original owner. Yeah. Okay. But no, I think with Fields' upside being his legs and his rushing ability, I think we can absolutely see him crack the top five. And even if he just continues to progress as a passer, he doesn't have to get – it's not like he has to go from D to A. Mm-hmm. He just needs to go from like D to C, D to C, C plus, B minus even. And I think his legs will carry him into a top five, if if healthy, if healthy. will carry yeah, him to a top that's... five. Top I agree five with that. Finish. I mean, his – Throwing attempts do scare me, but I do believe that if they improve the offensive line, I think we'll see an uptick in attempts. Plus, he has better receivers or more receivers to throw to. So I I do see Justin Fields cracking the top five. I think the player that benefits the most from these acquisitions was Justin Fields. Absolutely. DJ Moore stonks, in my opinion, don't shoot up. Darnell Mooney's don't shoot up. Claypool in my opinion, goes down. I think Claypool is completely done. I I wouldn't even touch him. Those are my opinion, but I think Fields certainly is going to benefit the most this offseason, and it certainly helps that he already knows that he's the guy for Chicago. He doesn't have to wait until, you know, preseason begins like Jalen Hurts had to. Yeah, and I think the thing that kind of also bothers me the most about DJ Moore is – Why was Carolina willing to give up their best offensive player just for the 1.1? Like you, like that's the only thing that scares me. Like if they were in love with DJ Moore, then they would have figured out another way to get that 1.1 to get the quarterback they want. So who do you think the Panthers draft at 1.1? I think they're going to go with CJ Stroud. Me too. And which sucks. I mean, I'm not in the position to draft him in any dynasty leagues, but it would certainly suck if you were one of the first two picks in a dynasty league for a rookie draft and uh, CJ Stroud was on the Panthers. I still think you have to draft him because Panthers are in complete rebuild mode. So in the next three years, you would probably be happy that you got CJ Stroud on your team. But all I'm thinking about for the Panthers, this goes for dynasty and redraft leagues. If you're in any of these types of leagues, listen up here, because there will be, I'm saying it right now, there's going to be a no name on the Panthers that is going to be the waiver wire gem of the year this year. I have no idea who it's going to be, but it has to be, someone's going to be getting the ball in offense. I have no idea who it's going to be. It could be the quarterback, but that's a little too obvious, but there's going to be a wide receiver or a tight end or a running back that just absolutely kills it as like a flex player of the year. And I can't wait to see who that is. Cause right now I'm not touching anyone on the Panthers, but that yeah, could change no, the year. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm getting like James Robinson vibes from the Panthers. There's going to be like some undrafted, some like no name person is going to just come out of nowhere. And, and the camp is just going to be like, yeah, he kind of runs the ball like really well. Like he's like really running the ball. Well, and next thing you know, he's got 18 carries for 110 yards and a touchdown in week one, and everybody's blowing their fob all over yeah, the dude. place. A hundred percent. And regretting it. <laughs> yeah, and regretting, regretting it. <laughs> just as long as, as he doesn't catch Philip Lindsay syndrome, where he like ran for a thousand yards his rookie year and then just like became the fourth string running back on the Texans, it's all good. All right, guys, that does it for part one of our free agency frenzy episode. We just covered the Bears. Up next, we're going to talk about the Las Vegas Raiders. So if you want to go to our channel and press next or however YouTube works, we don't really know yet, but go ahead and watch this Las Vegas Raiders episode. We also have the Jets coming up after that. Go ahead and like our video on YouTube if you enjoyed this one, and don't forget to subscribe for more content. Paul, it was a pleasure. I'll see you tomorrow. It was, and real quick before we end it, I want everyone to comment whether they think John should keep the fedora for the rest of recording ever. Yeah, I think I kind of have to. 
I think you have to. I think it's sick on you. I'm fedora guy. I love it. <laughs> I love it. 